Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube presentation about the Noble Active 3.0 millimeter dental implant. During this case presentation, we're going to be evaluating the Noble Active 3.0 millimeter implant. The patient was a 19 year old healthy patient. He recently had a motor vehicle accident, causing him to lose a tooth and also to have his jaw fractured. Upon evaluation, you can see that the space was actually too narrow for an implant, so we had to do some orthodontics to open up the space. Even after orthodontics, the lateral position on the lower is very challenging for implants. You can see the mock-up of the 3.5 is still pretty tight. So the 3.0 millimeter implant is, is actually a quite an exciting alternative in this area because we're able to get that into a very, very small space. A flap was raised using a number 15 blade to reflect the tissue from the lingual area. So the flap was cut more lingual than, than normal to bring some of that tissue forward and create a little bit of a bulk of tissue so that we can create some papilla down the road. As you can see on this overhead view, the ridge was reflected but not completely stripped off of the parostium to maintain the blood supply. And then the neat thing about this drill is the precision drill is used to, to allow us to have pinpoint accuracy to start the osteotomy. The protocol for the Noble Active 3.0 is a little bit different in that you use a 1.5 millimeter twist drill to start the osteotomy. Here it was deemed that the, this is a kind of a medium bone type of situation. So I decided I would go from the 1.5 millimeter twist drill, then go to the 2 millimeter twist drill, and then place the implant. So here we are going with the 2 millimeter twist drill, and this is actually the final drill in the sequence. If it was dense, you could actually go one more drill, but that was fine. Now, here's the exciting part. Here's the 3.0 millimeter implant. It's a little tiny implant, nice and slender but with a very generous thread, which enables us to get a nice torque value of 45 newtons, which is recommended by the manufacturer. I'm using the driver to carry this to the mouth, which, which is the recommended way to do this, because I can use this and really focus on angulation and try to see down the uh, overhead of the implant and keep an eye on where this implant is actually going based on angulation. The aggressive thread enabled me to actually get a nice high torque on this implant and therefore I'm able to do an immediate temporary on the day of uh, delivery of the implant and then wait three months and, and then put on a final restoration. Here you can see that the implant comes in various lengths. It comes in 10, 11.5, 13 and 15 millimeters. And then as you'll notice that the implant is 3 millimeters wide but the abutment interface is actually 2.5 millimeters because of the platform shift which is 0.25 millimeters on each side. So we can see that the implant did torque to 45 newtons here which is just absolutely perfect. Because anything over 35 enables me to put on the immediate temporary abutment. The immediate temporary abutment is a real fantastic way to put a cement retained temporary on this uh, system and so this gets screwed down on top of the implant and should never be torqued to more than 15 newton centimeters. It comes in two different lengths, so depending on how deep you have to put the implant, uh, but this particular uh, situation we're using a 1.5 millimeter immediate temporary abutment. Again, these are only torqued to 15 newton centimeters on all prosthetic screws and abutments. So one of the things I like to do is I like to take a replica and use it as a handle. So I'll make a immediate temporary abutment attached to the handle and then start to create the temporary this way. One of my goals is to have no flowable uh, free resin in the sulcus at the time of surgery. So I start to add some of the resin on the abutment uh, sleeve prior to going to the mouth. And I create a little bullet and I call this the bullet technique. Once I get the bullet with a little bit of resin I can take it to the mouth and start to pick up the rest of the aspects of the temporary intraorally and not have any of the free resin in the sulcus at all. And this seems to work quite well with the patient. It takes me about eight minutes to create this 
it takes a little time at first to, to learn how to do it, but actually you go pretty fast once you, you figure it all out with your hands. So one of the things I like to do is to pick up the contact and pick up the buckle surface so that I can then create most of this out of the mouth. So I'm not making a model, I'm not creating any type of, uh, you know, kind of other records, and this means that I'm going to be saving time. And at the same time, we're able to get this temporary in to help support the tissue. Because we actually are going to gain some tissue because the space where the implant went in, that tissue is pushed forward because the incision was actually slightly lingual. So we're able to push that tissue forward and you can see we get quite a bulk of tissue in this particular situation. The light curing is done rapidly, so I like the rapid type of lights, the five second cure. And here I pick up that last mesial contact. And then this is enabling me to know the shape of the tooth once I pull this out and put it back on the replica with the immediate temporary abutment. You have to have two immediate temporary abutments to do this. So one for the replica and one to stay in the mouth. As this is uh, fabricated, we can see that I'm building it out with the flowable resin, adding a little bit here and there, and this is going to make it so that it brings out the shape of the tooth. And this is going to create a very beautiful temporary, as you can see, which smooths out very quickly because it's uh, a flowable resin. and can add a little bit of bond to make it look smooth. In this particular case, we also added a little bit of uh, allograft bone grafting material, and this was uh, carried to the mouth using a mold elevator and a bone spoon. Just to bulk the tissue out a little bit. Once this is all in place, I'm going to take a very, very little bit of tempon. This is in a very important point. You don't want a generous amount of tempon. You just want a very, very little amount just to wet the walls of the immediate temporary abutment sleeve. Once this is done, you take it to the mouth because we don't want a lot of this cement expressing out into the sulcus. So just a little bit will hold this on tremendously. It will not move to do that. It will actually be quite hard to get this off after the time of uh, three months of healing. I like to use a suturing technique that pulls the tissue up around the temporary now. And this is going to make the papilla a little bit stronger, a little bit more robust over the healing period. But I do not like to pull the suture over top of the papilla itself because it actually push, pushes the papilla down. So one of the techniques I use is to come lingual so you can get an attachment with the suture. And then follow a little bit uh, lower. So you can see in the lower right diagram, go low on, on the ridge. And then pass back through. And this is actually going to pull that buckle piece of tissue up around the temporary and create the, the pull so that the papilla gets a chance to heal a little bit higher. And you'll see later in the video how effective this is. It actually made the papilla quite beautiful in this case. So I'm passing back through a little bit higher, but pulling that anterior flap up against the uh, media temporary abutment and the crown assembly. And so as I tie it off in the lingual aspect, you'll see it kind of lift up and this lifting up is important to creating that papilla. So I'm not going over top of the papilla, I'm actually kind of lifting it instead. So it's kind of a papilla lift technique. So as we tie off this uh, gut suture, I would use silk sometimes, but gut is good if the patient, this patient comes about two hours from away. And uh, so we want to make sure that this is going to be able to be resorbed. So you can see the suture in position, lifting up the papilla and creating a nice uh, nice kind of look for the patient. So we take an x-ray making sure that everything is good and everything is seated. Then we do some non-functional loading tests. So first protrusive, working, non-working. See here on the protrusive we have to reduce this because I don't want any contact on this non-functional loaded tooth. So working, non-working and protrusive are all gone. The only way this is going to get hit with the bolus of food. Now here is the result. This, this is amazing. This 3.0 you can see in this particular case, the papilla have grown in very, very nicely. The implant looks great and the patient is going to be thrilled with this. In summary, this implant is a great implant due to the size, the platform shift, the conical seal, and all the features of the hex lobe which make this easy prosthetics. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube presentation about the Noble Active 3.0.